The Resident Evil 4 remake is finally here, but this reimagining of a 2005 classic is more than just the facelift. From expanded backstories to missing content, here are some of the biggest story differences in Resident Evil 4 Remake. Everyone's favorite Resident Evil religious cult, the Los Illuminados, are back and even deadlier than before, with a killer reintroduction showing a struggling woman who is about to be executed, filled with ominous chanting and a particularly rusty axe. We're not even a minute in and already these zealots are looking a lot more formidable than before. But who is this stranger? Well, she's referenced only moments after by the soon-to-be-departed Spanish cop duo. I mean, last week there was a search for some missing hikers. And much later on, you'll be able to visit the scene of the crime, coming across the other missing hiker. What the hell is going on here? Despite being a dangerous bunch back in the original, the Los Illuminados of the remake are clearly a bigger threat, up in the ante towards the locals and any unsuspecting passerbyers. Originally, Leon's explanation as to how he became a secret agent was a little vague, explaining that he received special training via a secret organization, working under the direct control of the president. Remake Leon, however, makes it clear that he was forced to join the government against his own will, having to undergo the same special training, but with punishing missions, pushing him to the brink of death, all while being trained under Major Krauser. Those punishing missions? A reference to Operation Javier from 2009's Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles. Released four years after Resident Evil 4, meaning the original release of RE4 missed some pretty crucial backstory regarding Leon and Krauser, but more on that later. Both Luis Serra and the Big Cheese himself, Chief Mendez, have had their backstories fleshed out, with the Spaniards sharing a surprisingly tragic personal connection to each other that wasn't present before. All is revealed by taking a peek at the village record files, which chronicle Father Betores Mendez's rise as the new village chief, as well as introducing the Navarro family. From what's available to read, it appears the village itself was prospering under its new chief. Mendez would homeschool the local children, all while dining with the village families to trade gossip and grievances, and had even opened the village up to the outside world. On top of that, we learn that Luis Serra Navarro, as a child, was living with his sick grandfather by a cabin near a lake. The very same one Leon eventually rescues Luis from later on. After Mendez meets with the Navarros, Luis's grandfather tells the chief, If anything happens, you know what to do. Shortly afterwards, the old man passes away, Luis runs away, and the Los Illuminados return to the village and begin administering the local population with the Plaga with Mendez unsure whether or not he can trust them. The humanization of Mendez and his personal connection with the Navarro family wasn't previously present and does a great job of illustrating just how damaging the Plagas really are on what was once a peaceful and happy village. While the exact origins of the Plagas aren't fully explained in the original Resident Evil 4, the remake does contain some key differences and goes further into detail, expanding upon the relationship between Osman Sadler and Ramon Salazar. According to the 2005 original's Butler's memo, Ramon Salazar had no family, and Lord Sadler was able to influence Ramon into undoing the seal of the Las Plagas once made by his own ancestors. In the remake, however, when reading the Housekeeper's Memo 1, we find out that the previous Salazar and Castellan of the Castle, Lord Diego, was actively fighting against the Sadlers in order to keep the Plagas away from their family reach, giving both the Salazars and Sadlers of yesteryear a storied history together that was unseen in the original. Ramon isn't the only one to have his family tree extended. While on the island, you'll come across a few epitaphs from different Sadlers, including the likes of Keenan and a fella called Hester Sadler, which isn't the most intimidating name out there. While Leon has plenty of run-ins with Plaga-controlled enemies, none are more dangerous and unpredictable than Ashley herself, with Sadler being shown to have greater power over the mind control and abilities of the Plagas once a host is infected. Before you reach the castle's maze, Sadler takes control over a weakened Ashley, tricking her into attacking Leon with his own knife and causing the two to separate right before calling him Temperance Child. Ashley, 
But the remake doesn't just stop there, and actually goes one step further, highlighting just how strong Sadler's mind-altering abilities really are, with him being powerful enough to directly influence Leon's mind, causing him to hallucinate. You found your missing senorita. Luis, the self-confessed ladies' man of Resident Evil 4, not only has a more detailed backstory in the remake, but also has a lot more screen time as well. Instead of annoyingly walking away during the most inconvenient times, I forgot something. You guys go on ahead. Or, like a dummy, saying he's dropped plot important items when we could really do with having them. Oh shit! I must have dropped it when I was running away from them. Although describing himself as just a researcher hired by Sadler, you actually come to find out that his credentials go a lot deeper than that. Formerly working for Umbrella, Luis was part of their European division, heading up research on how to further develop the Plagas into an effective bio-organic weapon. Luis's guilt for his actions are made clear each time Leon asks why he's helping. I told you, it makes me feel better. But his actions eventually catch up with him when Krauser, not Sadler like in the original, puts Luis out of commission. And killing a few rats along the way. We are just getting started, Rookie. While he might look like the same cold hearted, knife wielding soldier that we all love to hate back in 2005, Major Jack Krauser enters the remake with a significantly expanded story that not only changes his motivations, but also his relationship with Leon. Despite Leon and Krauser clearly showing some history together, there wasn't much to bite your teeth into until Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles, which shows Krauser and Leon teaming up to take down a South American drug cartel who's been working with Umbrella. Over the course of the campaign, you'd come to learn about Krauser's mistrust of Leon, and his desire, above all else, to gain power through the use of bio-organic weapons. While none of this, naturally, could have been mentioned in the original Resident Evil 4, it plays an important role in setting up Krauser's motivations in the remake, and his hatred for the US government. Thanks to a redacted case file in the remake, we come to find out that Operation Javier didn't go according to plan, with Krauser leading an entire team of elite soldiers into South America only for Krauser to be the only returning survivor. His team killed by the very same people who organized the mission in the first place, and then covered up. Which, to be honest, as far as villain backstories go, is pretty justifiable, right? Revenge. You think I'm doing all this for revenge? Once you eventually defeat the crazed soldier, Krauser expresses pride in Leon's combat abilities, with his final words being... which is a pretty substantial change compared to the original unceremonious tower explosion. Albert Wesker is usually the mastermind behind the scenes, and the tradition continues in the Resident Evil 4 remake. Originally making an appearance in both separate ways and assignment Ada, Wesker's involvement was clear, with him tasking Ada Wong to retrieve the ever-so-precious Plaga sample so he could resurrect Umbrella. The remake slightly changes this, with Wesker spelling out his bonkers plans for world domination, and that once he obtains the sample, there'll be billions of casualties. Ada, not wanting that on her conscience, decides to command the escape helicopter for herself, as well as the sample, flying off into the sunset. If it wasn't clear enough what Wesker might be referring to, he is, of course, bringing up his plans for complete global saturation. A lovely nod to Resident Evil 5. Boroboros will be released into the atmosphere, ensuring complete global saturation. Eagle-eyed players can also spot pictures of both Excella, Wesker's evil confidant in RE5, and the Stairway of the Sun, the West African virus progenitor-laden plant from RE5, in the reflection of his sunglasses. While the Resident Evil 4 remake is jam-packed with plenty to do, there are a couple of omissions. Chiefly among them is U3, the disgusting experimental bioweapon which Leon fights during his exploration of the underground cellars. Despite this frightening boss battle not being in the game, as well as separate ways, and Simon Ada not making the cut either, we can only hope we'll see them return later on as DLC, especially because of this cheeky little reference made by Leon. I think we both know this where we go our separate ways. Bruce to Condor 1. I've identified a route to the lake. 
Being a government agent does come with some benefits, not only including tactical helicopter support from a polite southern gentleman or a snazzy pinstripe suit. In the remake, and unlike the original, Leon and crew are given special code names befitting of their top secret government status. Unfortunately for Leon, it looks like he forgot to pass all of that very important security training before accepting the job. While in enemy territory, Leon goes ahead and blurts out, President's daughter, Baby Eagle. It's likely she's in this village. Yeah, not much of a code word if you just blurt out the real name, is it? Since the very start of the series, Resident Evil hasn't had much of a problem with laying out the occasional cringy one-liner here and there. And back in 2005, Resident Evil 4 was no exception. I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics too. How rude! Luis, please relax. So, uh, after you take me back to my place, how about we do some, um, overtime? That's not even subtle. You know, you're kind of cute without those glasses. Give me your number when I get back. You too, Leon. Calm down. In the remake, however, the thirst is toned significantly down. Luis now refers to Ashley as a senorita. Hey, I see you found your missing senorita. Senorita has a name, Miss Ashley. You are? And Ashley tells Leon she can ask her dad to see if he can be brought over to her security detail. You know, I could put in a word with my dad. Have you assigned to my detail? If you're interested. Only really Ada keeps the original's thirsty distractions alive. Maybe you'll live to meet me again. And then I might get you that greeting you were looking for. You think I'm gonna give up that easy? So, those are some of the biggest story differences we found during our time with 2023's Resident Evil 4. Noticed anything different during your playthrough? Make sure to let us know. And if you're looking for more videos like this, make sure to watch our How Long Is Resident Evil 4 video or our review.